food inflation spiked sharply higher in January from 4.19% in December to 5.94%. And from the looks of it, uh, the early data indicate that February food inflation could be higher at 6.1%. That's according to economists whom we polled. The culprits are two items of widespread consumption, cereals and milk and milk products. Cereal inflation rose by 16.2% in January and the CNBC TV18 poll shows it may rise to over 17% in February. Likewise, milk and milk product prices that surged by 8.79% in January will be likely up by 9.08% in February. Also impacting the food price psyche is the lower stocks of grains with the Food Corporation of India at 32.4 million tonnes as of mid-February versus 54 and 56 million tonnes in previous Februarys. The final blow appears to be the weather. An unusually hot February is feared to have hurt the rabi crop, especially crops like wheat, while the meteorological department predicts that March 2 could be hotter than normal. So what's the state of the rabi harvest and what will be the food stock and the food price situation in the next two quarters before we start thinking about the Kharif crop coming in? These are the questions we are asking and joining us to answer them are Professor Ramesh Chand, uh, the agricultural expert from the Niti Aayog, Harish Damodaran, uh, the rural affairs and agricultural editor from the Indian Express, and Ajay Veer Jhakar, chairman of the Bharat Krishak Samaj, the man who knows where the shoe pinches or where the sickle hurts. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Professor Chand, uh, I, I'm going to ask the same question to all three of you actually. I want your estimate of uh, the wheat crop and the food grain crop in general. Uh, is the weather likely to have hurted it, uh, to have hurt it? Uh, I think media is uh, exaggerating impact of uh, uh, higher temperature on uh, output of uh, food grain in uh, Ravi season. Uh, no doubt uh, we are having a maximum temperature which is 2 to 3 degrees Celsius higher than what is the average of past several years in some parts of the country. But my discussions with agriculture scientists reveal that unless this increase is more than six degrees Celsius, and that too in minimum temperature, not so much in maximum temperature. We should not worry about its impact on uh, production of uh, uh, beet crop uh, and uh, uh, mustard and uh, uh, chicken. These are the three uh, main uh, food crop of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, Ravi season. Yes, March is the month which create a lot of uh, uncertainty for Ravi crops. Uh, we normally have uh, 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 hailstorms in many parts of the country. And if temperature shoots up like it shoots up last year by more than 10 degrees Celsius. So if that kind of shock happen, then certainly uh, there will be uh, concern and there will be a uh, strong adverse effect. But the way things are going, that temperature being slightly higher, uh, I consider it as a, as a normal kind of uh, deviation. Uh, to my mind, it is not a serious uh, aberration uh, in temperature. Oh, that's good to hear, sir. And I don't think this was a misinformation by the press. Sir. We actually heard from the IMD. And uh, uh, therefore, the uh, expectation, the fear was that it might affect the crop. Onion crop was anyway uh, affected, and that perhaps gave rise to fears about other crops. Mr. Jakar, would you broadly agree that uh, uh, the wheat output in particular, and not just wheat, even mustard, a very important rabi crop, are uh, in fine fettle? I, I agree with Dr. Ramesh Chanji. I think uh, uh, there is not going to be much impact of the temperature being higher for a few days or a week or so in January and February. Uh, at the moment, I, I, I have absolutely no fear of uh, less wheat stocks. And all this uh, speculation that uh, uh, the wheat will be less, it's too early to speculate, I think. So it's just, uh, it's just uh, markets always look for conspiracies and, 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 and issues. And oh, right. there's nothing to worry about. From the ground, I can tell you that. Oh, that's, that's music to our ears. Uh, 
we are more worried about the food prices. So uh, let me come to that. But uh, before that, Harish, uh, I assume that you are picking up much the same since the two experts uh, are have indicated that weather is not going to impact the uh, wheat crop. But more importantly, the stocks of food grains. Let me come to that question. Uh, the stocks that FCI has is nowhere near what it was in previous Februarys. Can that impact trader psychology and uh, put, put an upward momentum on prices? Yeah, I think it's a combination of both. But but I agree with uh, both Professor Ramesh and then Ajay Jaffer that, uh, I mean, I think according to me, the wheat crop looks very good as of now, okay? Mm. And uh, so long as your maximum temperatures don't cross 35 degrees, you know, I think I think it should be okay. Uh, and, and, and let me say that even last year, the crop looked very good till mid-March. Uh, uh, so what happened last year was a sudden spike, you know. So it's the, it's the delta which makes a difference, you know. Say in one week, suddenly temperatures go up by about 5 degrees. So I remember last year on 18th of March, I was in Jhajar. And I saw it was 38 degrees, you know. So that is a shock, you know. Whereas uh, I think uh, 30, early 30 should not be a problem. And and right now, actually, the, the 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 grain filling has started, you know. So I think as long as the temperatures remain, you know, below 35 degrees, I think it should be fine, you know. And uh, maybe a couple of uh, Western disturbances will help, you know, sort of cool, you know. But But definitely, yes, February was a worry, you know, that everybody thought that, you know, the temperatures will really, if February itself is a record, what will be uh, March? Yeah, you know, Mr. Jakar, uh, the one, one minute, one minute, Harish, the uh, uh, IMD also forecast higher than 40 degrees in several states, if I remember right, Gujarat, uh, Vidhar, Rajasthan. Uh, so, uh, uh, Ajay Veer Jakar, if March has, you know, an unusually high temperature, uh, over 40 degrees, will that be a matter of concern? I think so. Any abbreviation in weather in March will be a problem, but how big a problem is? We're just guessing. Like I, I don't, I wouldn't trust the IMD's uh, forecasting for next month uh, to say that it's going to be over 40 degrees. Uh, no, in I, some I, places, I, 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 no, in some places, no, they say. No, Yes, some places means a very general term. You know, some places it could be any, it could be a few districts or if a few I remember, things, but as a country, yeah, as sir, country, If I remember right, it was Rajasthan, Gujarat, Vidarbh. Uh, I remember those three regions for sure. But I guess those are not heavy wheat growing regions, so it doesn't matter. No, it's it's not about wheat. But I what I'm trying to say is that it's too early to guess. We don't know what's going to happen. Okay. And even if there is a heat wave, I think... We will not have a food security problem. Okay. Even even if there is a heat wave, we have enough. We, the wheat crop is very good. Okay. Even if it's affected by a few percentage points, we'll still have a lot of wheat. The sowing of wheat has been substantially higher okay. because of good market prices. Okay. Okay. Uh, that, that's um, uh, excellent uh, uh, news uh, for the future as well, uh, for the coming quarters. Uh, Mr. Chan, what I was asking Harish, and I'll go back to him on that, uh, the stocks... Food, uh, food Corporation of India stocks at the moment are much lower than they used to be in previous uh, Februarys. Uh, almost half of uh, what it was, 30, 32 million tons, uh, uh, I understand, wheat stocks with FCI. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, 32 is the total. The uh, uh, wheat stock is uh, 15 million tons. And uh, the uh, rice stock is about uh, 16 million tons. That looks like a fairly low compared to the previous years, previous three, four years. Would that be a, a matter of worry? Would that have a psychological uptick in prices? Um, as long as stocks do not below, do not go below what is the norm, a minimum stock, uh, I think it does not uh, cause uh, too much, uh, too much uh, uh, impact. And also, we are already in the month of March now. And uh, you will see that in a few days, the procurement of wheat will uh, start. So if there is a good amount of uh, procurement, un unlike uh, uh, last year, the stock can be even uh, replenished. Okay. So uh, just uh, uh, in the month of March, when procurement is uh, about, to, about to start, okay. stocks can go uh, low. Uh, I, I think that if crop is normal and there's a normal kind of procurement, stocks of uh, particularly wheat, they will be, uh, they will be uh, replenished. Okay. 
but i would say that like last year if story gets spoiled in the march particularly in the second fortnight of march <clears throat> then it's a different matter <clears throat> but that is totally uncertain we can't say anything uh, uh, about that at uh, at this point of time so at this point of time i think uh, things uh, do not uh, uh, do not look uh, very sum as far as uh, uh, this uh, uh, production and market arrival of wheat is concerned uh, procurement you are, you fear can be impacted if market prices are higher or uh, uh, is uh, worries more about the quantity of uh, output uh, of the harvest uh, mr chand what might impact procurement uh, i feel that uh, there will be uh, some pressure on price it is not that uh, pressure will not be there and uh, uh, we are just seeing that after government released uh, some quantity of wheat under yes. omss prices have uh, cooled down uh whether it will have a, 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 a bit a bit lasting uh, impact uh, uh, or not that is uh, yet to be seen my take on that is that if um, open market prices of wheat uh, say are 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 uh, higher than um, msp uh, government has a option of uh, considering paying bonus to the farmers okay So that is the practice which has been adopted uh, uh, quite often in the past also okay so uh, so so this is the mechanism that uh, that prices are now uh, close to not at close to uh, msp and if they are uh, somewhat higher that uh, that can be taken care uh, by uh, considering uh, 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 appropriate amount of uh, bonus for wheat one more thing the yes. statistic you present about uh, 16 17% increase in uh, price of cereal mm. uh, that's the retail price yes, i sir. still feel that the impact of cool down in uh, cooling down of wholesale prices has not yet transmitted to uh, a retail level there at a retail level we are seeing that uh, that the inflation in cereal is uh, is, is is much less okay. uh, the number meeting is for 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 retail and uh, it always happen with some time lag so i expect uh, march story in um, uh, in even retail prices of cereal to be different than what we are see we have seen in january and february oh okay that will be a very very big relief uh, because that will mean that the reserve bank will not have to go to an overdrive on interest rates uh, mr jakar what is your best assessment of procurement uh will the uh, 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 prices be good enough for the farmer to hand it over to the government uh, do you expect a bonus to be uh, required and your best guess therefore on prices as well so uh, it's interesting that ramesh chand ji should talk about a bonus because this government has been saying for the last 7 years that no bonus no state should even be giving a bonus the difference is last time last year we entered march with huge stocks of wheat and and uh, and patty but this year the stocks are limited so obviously the government is being practical and may offer a bonus should the price go up mm -hmm. i have no doubt that the government will be able to meet its procurement uh, uh, procurement targets if it gives a bonus or yes, if there's no crisis then even without a bonus it will be able to meet but what we need to see is fodder prices for animal husbandry that's where i think this heat wave that came in february or january this little sprouts of heat or what what is being projected will have more of an impact on fodder and animal husbandry which is a crucial part of the agricultural landscape i think that's where the worry is today uh, we may have a worry on uh, wheat productivity in march but i am very worried about animal husbandry and fodder at at the moment that's where i think the real worry is which impacts the livelihoods of small farmers landless farmers marginal farmers that's the real worry i If thank you, you. At, i thank you sir for outguessing guessing my next question no, which was indeed no, the, milk yes let me let me just finish sure. the other part is that for the last 10 years from my own farm i have seen that wheat straw prices always double up every year i keep telling farmers is the best investment is to keep wheat straw you harvest your wheat you keep your straw you sell it after 8 months you double your you double the value Okay. and last year surprisingly the price went up by four times or five times Absolutely. normally it goes up and this is what i worry about is that fodder prices are going to rise substantially and i don't think so the government has a plan plan for it uh, mr jakar thank you very much for preempting my question i was going to bring 
uh, milk production and milk prices as a very key element that is uh, abetting food inflation. But uh, we have to take a break. But after the break, we'll again engage with our experts to check whether, if not cereals, whether milk inflation will lead to higher food inflation and what steps the government can take on both. Back in a minute. Welcome back. We have been analysing the high food inflation that was reported in January and that many economists fear will continue in February as well. I've been speaking with Mr. Ramesh Chan, Mr. Ajay Veer Jakar and Harish Damodaran. Uh, the key takeaway so far has been that cereal output may not be a problem. The wheat crop doesn't look like it has been harmed by high temperatures and stocks with the FCI could still rise. The procurement uh, has a good chance to be excellent this March. The real problem could be a high price of fodder and therefore high prices of milk rising even further. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Uh, Dr. Chand, I, we now have to come to what steps the government can take. So uh, let me start with you. Anything specific that, has, that we have to speak about on cereals? I guess bonus announcements for uh, grains is about the only step you would recommend? No, I will say that uh, if uh, production is uh, affected and uh, market prices uh, uh, are much higher than uh, MSP, then government has to exercise that option for procurement. Okay. But, uh, but it is subject to these two things which uh, I am mentioning. Yes. Not that necessarily we have to uh, go for this. And second is that uh, you just mentioned that uh, wheat output is not a matter of concern, but I would say cereal prices are still a matter of concern mm. because they are already, uh, February figure you are giving 17%. Yes. So whatever decline happened, you still find that they remain in uh, double digit and given the bait of uh, cereal 12%. So cereal still remain the biggest factor for overall uh, overall uh, food, food inflation. Uh, inflation. Okay. Uh, coming to your second thing about uh, this uh, uh, milk, uh, yeah, about uh, milk, uh, milk prices. Uh, fodder is one component. Of course, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, data that uh, prices of dry fodder have uh, gone very, very high, very steep in crisis. But another uh, important component of cost of milk is prices of cakes. Okay. Uh, but is the prices of uh, prices oil of uh, uh, oil, oil cakes, cake. uh, huh, oil, oil, uh, oil cakes. And we have seen that uh, in, in the creep season, uh, the prices of soybean uh, remained higher than what was MSP. Oh. So, which means that uh, cake prices, uh, also uh, be uh, uh, because uh, soybean is the largest oil seed we are uh, producing, the largest yes. product that oil comes from yes. uh, soybean. So, that was also a factor for, uh, I would say, uh, high inflation in uh, in uh, milk uh, prices. Okay. But moving from winter to summer, uh, uh, I don't think that is going to affect because you then compare previous year summer with this year summer. <laughs> it's not okay. the momentum which we are discussing right now. We yeah. are discussing inflation, which is year on year, that yes. last year March and this year March. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But even in milk, I think the month-on-month -month inflation is expected to be close to 0.5%. Uh, January was 0.5% and the expectation is even February could be 0.4 or 5% or 0.5%. Uh, Mr. Jakar, uh, should the answer therefore lie in being prepared with uh, lowering the duties of imported skimmed milk powder or some other such steps? I'm absolutely uh, against uh, import of milk powder until unless it's a uh, it's it's a very grave situation which it is not. But my advice to the government would be to procure at least 20 percent, 25 percent more than their uh, targets for procurement, the annual targets which they have according to the plan. Okay. Because we've not had a drought in India for many years now, like mm. six seven years, we've had a normal monsoon. And that leads to the fact that chances of a drought increase every year that uh, there has been a normal monsoon. There's there's talk of El Nino. And should that happen, then India is in a deep crisis. So I think so to prepare, my advice would be to build stocks, not for March, but to build stocks less the rain should fail because chances of rain failing every year increase with a, with a good monsoon. So that's what 
I would be focusing on is have at least twenty five percent more stocks than than which is which is which is the plan. Okay, that's what I would I would look at. Fair point. Uh, one hopes that they're able to be they are successful in uh, attracting that much uh, by way of uh, good procurement prices. Uh, Harish, uh, policy prescriptions. No, I, I think we are not understanding the logic of milk. See, milk production shoots up during the winters, but consumption is less. Mm. Okay. And so what happens is dairies convert the surplus milk into commodities. Okay. okay? In summer, production falls, mm. but demand shoots up because we have more ice cream. So you're we saying have more we have missed the bus already. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so what I'm saying is, so we are going to start the summer with hardly any stocks, Stock. you know, okay. already, I mean, already during the, during the winters, uh, dairies have been paying, I think about 55 rupees per liter for buffalo milk and about for, almost 40 rupees for cow milk, you know. Okay. So, so we are going to start the summer when production is going to fall and your demand is, is going to shoot up. So I don't think we should be, uh, we should be comparing this summer over last summer because uh, actually mm -hmm. we are starting off with, with a short supply. Oh. So, uh, I would be so I would be very I would be more worried about about milk, you know. Okay. And and as I said, we we will know in the next fifteen days. But oh. milk, we are still some we, we, we have a whole season, you know. Yeah. And the high prices yeah. will start inducing a supply response only from the next winter onwards. So yeah. we I have a long know. period where your demand is going to increase, but your supply is going to be constrained. Oh, well, yeah. that that may be the reason why we are already hearing murmurs of. Uh, uh, you know, probably a necessity to import. Uh, but I take Mr. Jakar's point on board as well. Just a final question to you, Mr. Chan. So we should be prepared for high food inflation, you think? Uh, if it is not cereal, I think the baton is being handed over to milk. So about 5-6% food inflation is what you see in the foreseeable couple of quarters? Your uh, voice broke, but I think you have completed your question. Uh, I think the food inflation uh, may cool down to some extent in the month of March because we are seeing a sharp fall in prices of potato and onion. Mm. You see, that, that vegetable things uh, which uh, we have uh, ignored. Yeah. So I feel that uh, cereal uh, inflation decelerating and uh, vegetable prices already uh, we know uh, onion prices are uh, coming down, uh, potato prices are also uh, coming down. So the total <coughs> effect of these <coughs> on <coughs> uh, will uh, lead to some moderation in uh, food inflation uh, in the month of March. That's my take on. Okay. Well, that's a positive one. Uh, we will know the February numbers, uh, of course, next week. Uh, but uh, let's hope that by March things cool down a bit. Uh, Ajay Jakar, Ravish Chan and Harish Damodaran, thank you very much for joining me and enlightening us about uh, the state of the wheat stocks, the winter uh, food grain stocks and the possible problems we may face uh, because of fodder shortage and milk prices. Uh, uh, our worries may not be food inflation because of cereals, but food inflation because of milk. That's uh, the main takeaway from this discussion. We wrap up on this show. Thank you very much for watching.